those of you who have eaten regularly at Woodland Skies for the last several years may remember Henry Eggman. He was one of our favorite waiters, and we have caught up with him lately, and we want to reintroduce you to him. So welcome, Henry. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. It's always great to be back. Uh, Let's find out a little bit about your life and, and what got you here and to where you are today. Okay. So, I know you grew up in Ghana. Yeah, I did. Let's have some of those pictures that we have of him as a child in Ghana. <laughs> Do we have those? Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> what age were you here? This I was probably about seven or eight, even on nine. I'm not quite sure. It's a pretty old picture. That's me in uh, middle school, and that's my little sister. Little sister. Yeah. And oh, this is one of my lunches here. <laughs> yes, this has been recently, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. But you may not, not recognize him with his beard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should have cut this before coming here. <laughs> <laughs> so what brought you and your family here? Well, so uh, my parents have been here since they were like high school kids. Uh, oh. And, you know, they finally gave me the opportunity to join them and further my education after I finished high school in Ghana. Oh, you so, finished high school in Ghana? Yeah, so I finished high school in Ghana and then I came over here, did community college for two years. Then I went down to Richmond, uh, that's when I left for Green Spring, and I went to VC to do a bachelor's degree in chemistry and psychology. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a little far away from here, I mean, uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, yeah. working on your doctorate in right. pharmacy. Right, pharmacy, yes, yes. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, I try. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So tell me a little bit just about your life in general. So uh, I'm a pretty fun person. People that know me know well. Uh, I don't usually do much if I'm not in school or I'm not working at, a, I actually work at CVS right now as a pharmacy intern. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not working, I'm pretty much catching up on books and uh, doing little road trips. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do you like Cincinnati? I like Cincinnati, but I, I miss Virginia. Virginia is like uh, my home now. Is it? Green Spring is like my second home because I'm always here. I feel yeah. like it. <laughs> when you come back into town, you're yeah, always. I show remember up here. Yeah, every time I come back to town, I definitely come back because uh, you know my first job was here. Uh, everybody was pretty great to me, and I love the residents out here. So every time I come down here, for whatever reason is, is I still have time to come and you know catch up with the people that I that still remember me with uh, my beard. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, tell me a little bit about the, the contrast you found between your life in Ghana and when you came here. Oh yeah, uh, things were things were very, very, very different. Uh, you know, growing up uh, in Ghana, I mean, there was a lot of resources out there, but the, in ways to cultivate them was not available. Right, and being here in the United States where you have all these resources and then if you really want to cultivate them, you definitely have the chance to do so. Uh -huh. But back home, uh, the resources are there, but ways to get hold of them and use them for better options are not available like that, mm -hmm. yeah. So how do people get ahead, say, in Ghana? Uh, I know there are a lot of people here, uh -huh. working here, who are from Ghana. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like half of the people that work here are from Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's more about personality, I think, that gets you a long way. Uh, People over there definitely are very friendly, uh, very accommodating, great hospitality. Uh, I've, well, I've yet to meet people of such kind. I've not been to that part of the many part of the world, but being in Ghana growing up, everybody was everybody's family, oh, you know, uh -huh. and that was just like that. And if I have it, you have it. If I don't, we all don't. Yeah, uh -huh. it was something like that. Yeah. A lot of sense of community. Though. Right, definitely. Yeah. So it's more of uh, togetherness than oh. like individualism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once you came here, then. Yeah, once I came here, uh, you know, the American dream is like you gotta fend for yourself and uh, right. make sure you, you know, you do better off for yourself. But there's less in terms of community. You know, uh -huh. what I mean, yeah, we all live in the same community or whatever not, but everybody kind of like go about go their separate their ways, ways and like yeah. whatever this person is going through it's not my problem but uh -huh. it's not that kind of same thing yeah. growing up in Ghana. That, that varies from part you know different parts of the country. Right yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, and of course here in the east everybody's going so fast they mm -hmm. don't 
have time to stop. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, like you said, in the East, everybody's moving in a very fast pace, but now in Cincinnati, I remember when I was first down there, I taught everybody was like, hey guys, we gotta go. You know, uh, everybody was really laid back, friendly, but just not in the fast pace like you would see here in the East Coast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I grew up with out in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun down there. Yeah. I kinda like it a little bit, yeah. 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 Okay, tell me a little bit about what you're studying now in pharmacy, because so many of us here uh -huh. are very familiar with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, yeah. I mean, uh, so I mean, uh, pharmacy, uh, University of Cincinnati, uh, James L. Winkle College of Pharmacy. Uh, I'm studying PharmD, so uh, hopefully by 2021, I'll be done with my uh, PharmD degree, and I'm also working on an MBA, so Master's in Business Administration. So hopefully in the future. I can uh, hopefully set up a whole, my own pharmacy and then trying to cut down the cost of these medications, like you said, because uh, working in the pharmacy and uh, looking at the medications people are taking and how much they're paying for it, even with the insurance, it's, it's saddening when people cannot get health right. because they can afford, say, Tylenol or something because right. just the insurance wouldn't pay for it or they just don't have that income to pay for it yet. Right. So I, we, I'm studying more into uh, drugs and uh, the mechanisms, how they affect the body, why you should take them, why you shouldn't take them, and uh, things of that stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of research with that? Uh, so it's more it's more like a patient-centered because, you know, pharmacy is pretty much like the second, the very second person you see once you leave a doctor's office. Like if a mm -hmm. doctor gives you a prescription, mm -hmm. you're definitely gonna come to a pharmacy. So it's I try to build more with uh, interpersonal relationship because I feel like, you know, the pharmacist is not just like a regular guy in the community, but serves as like a point of contact between your doctor and, you know, your health. Mm -hmm. So I focus more into patient care, or like how to treat patients, like with certain diseases and how to accommodate them and stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, if people are really aware of how much the pharmacist can help them so far as understanding Right, how right. the drugs react with their body and yeah definitely uh you will be surprised because uh, most most doctors write a prescription and then when you drop it off you know sometimes we pharmacists go ahead or behind your back call the doctor and say hey you know you're prescribing this medication this patient is already on this medication mm -hmm. there might be some kind of drug to drug interactions which i don't think will be safe for the patient so they have this kind of conversations with the doctor and then you know they end up uh say either decrease the dose or increase the dose or actually just switch to a mm. totally different uh, drug just for the patient's safety. But these are not some of the stuff the pharmacist talks to the patient about. It's something they talk to the doctor because sometimes patients don't really understand the mechanisms behind the conversation. So mm -hmm. pharmacists play a very big role when it comes to patient health. It's just that the community doesn't see it as such. Right, yeah. right. Well, pharmacists are always so busy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely uh, we are because uh, I mean, on a, on a regular day at CVS, uh, I'll probably fill up about 500,000 scripts, yeah. and that's... I know, I sometimes wait down here in the pharmacy, and I see her just running ragged trying to yeah. answer the phone and fill prescriptions. I know, it's it's hectic because uh, sometimes, like I said, you know, doctors write prescriptions for, say, eight days, but then the quantity of the prescription is for seven days. Mm -hmm. So it's like the patient is short one day. So you have to get on the phone, and then usually it's either the pharmacist or the pharmacy intern that can only talk to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you might see people in the pharmacy, like the pharmacy technician, they might, oh, why did you stand around? Why are they not helping out? But you know, the pharmacist is on the phone with your doctor just trying to make sure your prescription comes out right and everything is safe for you, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a fascinating career. Yeah. I. I, I like it, I love it. Uh, the only parts that gets a little tricky is when it comes to uh, insurance, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, when people fill out their prescriptions and uh, the insurance are not paying for it or certain parts of the insurance will not pay for certain parts of medications. It, it sounds like I'm the, you know, I'm the reason why the insurance is not paying for it, but. Of course. <laughs> yeah, right. so, because I'm the guy that's supposed to give you the prescription and I'm telling you, hey, this is how much it's gonna be, it sounds like, I'm trying to take money from you, but it's the insurance is not trying to pay for that kind of prescription or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you like particularly about life in the United States? Uh, I enjoy sightseeing. And oh, I, do you? Yeah, I really do enjoy sightseeing, uh, and I feel like being in the United States. I mean, it's 50 states. I've probably only been into 15 of them. 
I, just the fact that you can be in all these parts of these places and still be at one place at the same time, it's just amazing. It's, it's uh, looking at infrastructures and I literally just took uh, Richmond Highway Route 1 this morning and I remember when I first came to this country, it was just two lanes from uh, Mount Vernon all the way to Woodbridge. Now it's three lanes and I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> so just the way things move infrastructure wise and it's just amazing, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a more diverse country, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I've, I've been to, you know, I lived here, I lived in Richmond and I've been to places where people are just friendly, very diverse and you see people from all walks of life. Like, I mean, the little pharmacy that I work at, uh, pretty much everybody in the pharmacy is from different parts of the country really? or different parts of the world. Yeah, <laughs> quite a lot further, yeah. I'm, uh, I work with this pharmacist that was from uh, Nigeria. I work with pharmacists from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, just different parts of the world, all in the same place, doing the same thing with a common goal, yeah. So I would say it's pretty diverse so far. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's, that's great. good. Where do you hope to settle when you get all this <laughs> put together? I know, that sounds like a trick <laughs> question. I, I don't know yet, but I don't want to go far from home. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to be here on the East Coast, but not quite sure yet. Maybe you're a trend, yeah. if not a, uh, maybe Green Spring, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure we'd welcome yeah, you here at Green Spring. I know, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Henry, for thank coming you. in and sharing thank you with for, us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here, and uh, I appreciate it. That's good. Yeah. So if you see Henry in the hallway once in a while, well, I say hello to him and, and remember him, and we we'll always remember him with great in enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> How when we needed something or wanted something at the table, he'd always say he'd go down to Safeway and get Yeah, I had to go to Safeway. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs>